Good morning and happy Sunday to everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made. What are we going to do? We're going to rejoice. Come on, I need you to put a smile on your face, gather your family around, turn that volume up wherever you are, whether you're at home, whether you're on the job. I need you to give God your best praise. Somebody ought to lift it. Somebody ought to shout in here. Come on and give them praise. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We need you like never before. Somebody give them glory. Come on. Get up from where you are. Yes, sir. Put a smile on your face. And listen to this. As we love on you, receive. Receive our praises. Here's why. Your name is high. Be glorified. There's no other name, no other name, no other name like you. Your name is high. Be glorified. You are greater. You are greater. And greater to be praised. We lift your name. Rejoice with us this morning. Come on, we're going to say it all across the globe as we love. Receive our love, Lord. Yeah, say it loud. And as we shout your name. Receive our love, Lord. Receive our love. And that's we 
should echo that. You're great, you're great, you're great. You're great, you're great. Come on, put it there in the chat section. Hallelujah. We serve a great and awesome God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we lift our hands to you, Father. And we simply say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, every worshiper, every worshiper, every praiser. Come on, let's join in. Let's do this corporately. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our will says yes. Our soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul sing. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul sing. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me say hallelujah. Oh my soul, oh my soul, sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it with us this morning. Oh my soul, sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my soul, oh my soul, sing. Hallelujah. It's too easy not to say it. Hallelujah. You reign forever. Reign forever. Reign forever. Come on, let's worship him corporately. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. Come on, you reign. Reign forever. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Now, this is my part. You brought me over. You brought me over. Oh, my soul. Oh, Anybody glad about that this morning? You brought me. You brought me over. Oh, my soul. Oh, yes. my soul. You brought me you over. brought me over. Yeah. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Can we say that again? You brought me over. You brought me over. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anybody grateful that he brought you a mighty long oh, way? Come on, testify sing. this morning. You brought me over. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul will sing. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say hallelujah.
Come on, lift your hands where you are. Thine the glory. Come on, I just need a, somebody to agree with us this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thine the glory. Hey, God. Revive us again. I'm going to say it again, Tugs. Hallelujah. Hey. Thine the glory. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Yeah. Revive us again. If you're in your living room, I need you to lift it with us. Revive us again. Come on, they're in the family room. Say it, say it, say it. Revive us again. Don't let anything distract you. Say it, say it. Again. Again. Oh yeah, yeah. Find us again. Somebody ought to bless him right there. Come on, you ought to thank him. If you're looking for a revival, if you're looking for a refresher, I need you to open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on, don't play with it. Open up your mouth. for you Lord we want more of you and less of us come on wherever you may be today I need you to just cry out to him hallelujah is the praise that is due to him come on hallelujah hallelujah he's given us a name and a praise I said he's given us a name and a praise Good morning and welcome to Agape Family Worship Center. My name is Joy Osahan and thank you for joining us online. If this is your first time, please be sure to text the word first time at 797979 and we will be sending you a very special gift from our hearts to yours, but it will be virtual. And you know what? Don't be shy. Interact with one another in that chat box drop in there where you're tuning in from show each other love and also don't be stingy please be sure to share today's service on all of your social media platforms and also be sure to follow agape railway now let's get back to service we're gonna yet praise him how many want to praise him forever he's done marvelous things he's done great things i need you to put your hands together come on let's bless his name 
song it says, just wanna praise you forever. Yes, Lord, and ever, and ever, for all you've done for me. Anybody grateful this morning? Blessings and glory and I. great day at Agape. I'm GL Douglas and here's a list of your upcoming events. Hey, if you are struggling to lose some of that quarantine weight, listen, Agape Fit has you covered. Every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., join their virtual fitness classes that's led by some of our amazing instructors. For more information and to register, log on to agapecenter.org slash events. Agape Fit and Singles Ministry are partnering up for the All-State Virtual Hot Chocolate Race, Saturday, May 1st. It's not too late to register. Log on to agapecenter.org slash events for more information. Numa Life School of Ministry summer semester begins May 4th. Please visit agapecenter.org slash Numa 2021 for more details. Agape Fit is offering a very important workshop May 15th at 11 a.m. entitled Get Informed What Our People Need to Know About the COVID-19 Vaccine. We all need to be there. This workshop will feature Dr. Chris Cornell, who is a public health specialist 
and is featured in numerous events nationally on COVID-19, she will answer all of your questions. Plus, we'll have members share their vaccination stories to help dispel the myths and fears. So check out Agape's website today to register. Hey parents, don't forget, we have something for your children. There will be Children's Church at 11 a.m. However, there's no teen church today, but next Sunday, we are coming back with a brand new series. So don't forget to log on. Well, Agape, thank you for watching. Please make note of all the wonderful things happening right here at Agape, even virtually, as we continue to do things the Jesus way. Thank you, GL, for those announcements. And you can go to our website and get more detail about all of the great things that we're doing here at Agape. Well, good morning, Agape family. And those of you who are viewing from far and near, I miss you and I am so glad to be with you this morning. This is our Sunday of hope. And you know how excited I get about St. Jude. For the past several weeks, we've shown clips of children who are being treated or have been already treated at St. Jude. And we've also shown you their families and how much gratitude they have because of the recovery that has taken place because they went to St. Jude. So St. Jude started in 2008, uh, the theme called Sunday of Hope and over 600 churches partnered from that time up until now to once a year on a Sunday raise money to give to St. Jude to help with their research and what they're doing with children. So for the past five or more years, Agape has partnered with Light and Salt, a vision that Sister Tina Marshall had to bring churches together in New Jersey so that we could collectively partner with the Sunday of Hope program. We set financial goals every year and together we try to meet that goal. So we've been blessed because Agape has given liberally because of your generosity and your selflessness. Pastor and I, along with a couple of other of our elders or people in leadership have been able to go and tour St. Jude. And it is a phenomenal place. We see where our money goes. It is very inviting and warm for children who are being treated there. And the good thing is that families do not pay one penny for all of the treatment that the children get. This was Danny Thomas's vision in 1962 to open a hospital where children from all colors, creeds, and races could come within the United States as well as around the world and be treated so that the children could get excellent care and get better without having the families having to pay anything. So what we've learned from the research is that overall, the childhood cancer recovery rate is now up to 80 or more percent. Some of the lymphoblastic cancer, which is very serious cancer and rare cancers, has a recovery rate of 94 percent. And sickle cell anemia, which is treated by St. Jude. They are the largest pediatric hospital in the country for that area of a treatment. From birth to 18 years old, children, as they go into their teens, can go there, and the, rec the recovery rate is excellent. It costs St. Jude $2.2 million a day to render the service that they do and that cost is growing every year. But did I say that no family has to pay one penny for the treatment? We ought to just praise the Lord right there. And 40% of the children who go to St. Jude are children of color. So we are so grateful to be able to partner. A link is on the push pay uh, section of our, our screen. When you click push pay, 
We set up a link for St. Jude. So if you've not already given, I encourage you today to click that link and be a blessing. For some of you who still want to mail in checks or money orders, you can make them out to Agape Family Worship Center, P.O. Box 1623, Rawway, New Jersey, 07065. And we will collectively take all the offerings that we get, make one check, or however we give, either by credit card or whatever, we will send that money to St. Jude as a unit. And so we thank God for you and your generosity over these years, it has been my honor to represent us because I know that this is a good cause and I know that we need hope. St. Jude needs hope and we need hope in the world and in America. And I can tell you that on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And if we proceed with that thought in mind and stand on that conviction, I know we can help St. Jude and we can help during these dire times that we're living in because God is still our source. So I thank you for what you're going to do. Don't let me have to come and get you. Come on, Agape. <laughs> You know I don't play when it comes to St. Jude. So thank you so very much. And now we're going to receive our illustrious pastor, Dr. Lawrence Raphael Powell. Come on, give us a virtual hand clap as he comes. <laughs> she said illustrious. Well, thank you, thank you, Dr. O. I'm sure you were delighted to see Dr. O uh, in a, a wonderful surprise this morning. Um, and in light of uh, this um, particular part of our service giving, I want to encourage you as well in the giving of the Lord's tithe and offerings. Um, Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 is a reference that I want to present to you today as it relates to giving. Uh, the the uh, message Bible uh, near the end of that verse uh, says generosity begets generosity. And when you consider this very familiar passage of scripture, give and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, will be put into your bosom for whatever measure that, you, uh, for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. I want you to hear me very clearly when I say this, giving is the key to receiving. Giving is the means of receiving. In the context here of Luke chapter 6, it's not so much about giving money or giving offerings. It's uh, about giving love, giving mercy, and giving forgiveness. And if you give love, you'll receive love. If you give mercy, you'll receive mercy. If you give forgiveness, you'll receive forgiveness. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Though the, um, the main point of the, of the con in the context of this particular verse is not necessarily about giving offerings, it is a kingdom principle or a principle of the kingdom that we can see throughout scripture. Uh, it's giving and receiving, it's seed time and harvest, that if you give, you will receive in the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Again, generosity begets generosity. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that um, if you get, or when you give, in fact, he says, let everyone give, let each one give. And then he instructs us to give, not under compulsion, not as if you've just lost your best friend, but to give purposefully, uh, to give intentionally, to give cheerfully, and to give generously. And when you give according to the word of the Lord, then you can expect God to do his part and release 
what is we call a harvest or are you receiving from him the fruit of your faith uh, of of your faith and obedience in him and so in addition to your giving above and beyond today to saint jude uh, thank you in advance for your commitment to ministry here and to the kingdom of god and the giving of your tithe and offerings let me back up his tithe and your offerings that are above and beyond it belongs to him let's honor him with our first fruits, let's honor him, acknowledging that he is first in everything, first in our life, and let's do it as an act of worship, of genuine worship, and an act of faith. I'm going to step out the way. The worship team's going to lead us a little further uh, in this time of worship and giving, and I'm coming back. I've got a word from the Lord to share with you today, and if you have not already let someone know that Agape is online right now, and uh, we've got uh, a great a great thing going on here, and, and I don't mean that irreverently. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's huge. The presence of God is so mighty in this room, and I'm certain that you feel it where you are. So share the blessing and let somebody know I've got a word from the Lord that I know is going to bless you, and be right back. Amen. The kind of God we serve, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's more than enough. If you believe that this morning, I need you to worship him right where you are. Hallelujah. never be more loved than I am right now wasn't holding you up so there is nothing I can do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now oh yeah going through a storm but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. You would try. You are enough. You are enough.
Let's take our seed and lift it up before the Lord. And Lord, you are Jehovah. I am that I am. You are El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. You are our sufficiency, our peace, and our prosperity. You are our source. And in giving today, we acknowledge you first and foremost, that you are our very life. It's in you we live, move, and have our being. We thank you for giving us this that we hold in our hand, that we may give it back to you, recognizing generosity begets generosity, and that you keep the cycle moving, providing for us so that all of our need is met, and that we may be able to provide for the things that are in keeping with the edification of your church and the advancement of your kingdom. You would not have us to give and not give it back to us according to your word. And therefore, we stand on the principle and the power of Luke 6 and 38, that as we give, we will receive good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Therefore, we give in Jesus' name, cheerfully, generously, and purposefully. Take delight in what we give now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you in advance for your faithfulness in giving to the kingdom of God. We certainly appreciate you so very, very much. And once we have tallied the, uh, the number, uh, uh, the collection received, the special collection received for St. Jude, we will provide that to you so we can all celebrate together. Amen. It's, it's really uh, awesome in this place. And, and I know you want to be here, and we want you here. And... Um, it's coming real soon. I keep saying that, and we're going to have the exact date for you soon, but at least I can give you the month, okay? So we're going to get through. This is the last This is the last Sunday in April, which means next Sunday is the first Sunday of May. We will observe communion next Sunday. Uh, we won't reassemble here uh, on, on, on this Sunday in May, but fast forward a few weeks. We're looking to begin re reassembling in the month of June of 2021. I'm excited about that. I feel a quickening in my spirit, my God. We'll give you the details and how we're going to do it, obviously, with protocols and, and particular guidelines, uh, uh, you know, as we're getting back to some sense of normalcy. Continue uh, to stand in faith and believe God with us uh, for the, the things that he's doing in our midst. God is up to something. He's moving mightily, and I want you to make certain that you're joining me as well, joining us on Wednesday evening for Revival Fire. This thing is of the Lord, and we want to just continue. I feel that Revival Fire burning in our midst this morning, and I'm grateful for it. I'd like you to turn your attention to an Old Testament book of the Bible, the book Habakkuk, and I want you to go to chapter 1 and also chapter 2. I'm going to read a few verses for you there. And as we approach our time to, together today in the word of the Lord, our Father, we just open our hearts to receive of you. Thank you for your word, which is alive and powerful. Your word uh, that is a light uh, uh, to us. It brings revelation and enlightenment. I thank you today, Father, that we'll not be hearers only, but doers of your word for your glory and for your honor. Use me as a vessel of clay as a mouthpiece of yours today to rightly divide the word of truth. And I thank you today that we will not be hearers only, but doers of your word for your glory and honor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, and then I want to read one verse from Habakkuk 2. That will be verse 4. Uh, the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you, violence, and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. 
for he eat for the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. I want to talk to you today from this topic, faith and frustration. Faith and frustration. Uh, this morning, uh, I really um, want to share this that this word has been burning, burning on my heart uh, for a, a few weeks now. I thought I'd share it on last week, but the way the service went, and of course, we want the will of the Lord to be done in all things. Um, I didn't get a chance to share this with you on last week, but I want you to hear what I have to say. I don't intend to be before you long. Uh, I encourage you to read this entire book. It's just three chapters. It will bless you indeed. You will see that as you read the, the, the text, uh, th th this book of the Bible that we've got a lot in common with this Old Testament prophet Habakkuk. Uh, some say Habakkuk. I'm going with Habakkuk. Uh, we see that uh, this book was written uh, somewhere between 610 and 605 BC. Uh, it deals with um, the context and time of the Jews living uh, in Judah prior to the Jewish exile to Babylon. Justice seemed to have been forgotten in the land and there are all kinds of things that were happening that were grievances uh, to the people and certainly to this prophet Habakkuk, whose name incidentally means uh, embrace, to embrace or embracer. It it describes uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the act of an individual taking someone into the, uh, unto themselves and embracing them, much like a parent would take their child and embrace them to comfort the child and to bring assurance to the child in times of of danger or concern. And so we see a hint even in the name of this particular book of God's desire to embrace us and to comfort us and to strengthen us even in the midst of what's going on in our world. And you must admit there's a whole lot going on in our world. I want to take you back. Uh, I'm going to take you back to 1971, y'all. I'm going to take you back to 1971. And there was, there was a, a, a song that was released in 1971. It's a classic, y'all. I'm going to tell him myself and, and some others who are in the room. Uh, I, I, I know Rodney was probably in high school. The rest of us were either uh, in preschool, or, uh, elementary school, or not born yet. But there was a song that was written by Marvin Gaye, and the title of the song, What's Going On? What's Going On? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Lauren know it. They know it. They know it. Y'all gonna mess with me. Tim Moon of NPR notes the song opens with an ambient noise of a party. It's a homegoing, a homecoming rather, for veterans uh, of the Vietnam War. But beneath the celebration, there is uneasiness. The song starts off as a party, but becomes something more of a lament or a prayer. You see, in 1971, unemployment was high. It was at 6%. People were protesting police brutality. And Americans were angry over the Vietnam War and the other con con conditions that were prevailing in the nation and in the world. 50 years later, hmm, the, 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 the uh, theme of this album and, and, and this particular song, What's Going On, uh, it's the same today as it was then. What's going on? What's going on? When we consider the events of this past week and uh, the, the shootings and the various things that we see on the news time and time again, it has us crying out, not just like Marvin Gaye, but more specifically like the prophet Habakkuk, who says, Lord, how long, how long, how long shall I look and see what's going on in the land? But it's like you're not answering, like you're not speaking, like you're not delivering. You see the violence. You see the injustice. You see the wickedness in the land. He's frustrated. He's, he's, he's dealing with uh, uh, the circumstances of his time that, that 
presented challenges, and, and you got to admit, life has its challenges. These are, in fact, crazy times, some of the craziest times that we've ever experienced. In the midst of everything that's going on in our world for the last year, now 14, 15 months, we've been dealing with this pandemic. Oh, my God, help us, help us, help us. Frustration is commonplace. We see it in every sphere of human activity. Frustration is simply the feeling of being upset or annoyed, especially because of an inability to change something or to achieve something that you're attempting to accomplish. Frustration. Although the details differ today and, uh, uh, can, and compared to the details of the prophet's uh, life uh, in antiquity, we see that they're very much similar as it relates to the feelings that we have when we consider what's going on in the world and what's going on in our world. Uh, maybe what you're dealing with is, is something to do with family matters or, or trouble in your home, trouble in your marriage. Maybe it's you got some money trouble. You got more month than money and your money's funny and you ain't laughing. And Maybe it's something that you're dealing with physically. Maybe Maybe you're just uh, challenged emotionally and, and mentally exhausted. There are so many people that are exhausted. You're not the only one who is feeling these feelings of exhaustion because every day it's a struggle. And I think it was Marvin Gaye as well that said, make me want to holler. That's where we are today. And we're crying out to God. But it seems as if God is not saying anything or if anything just a little. And so there is nothing really like the frustration of God's silence. Have you ever been in a particular place where you're crying out to him, but it doesn't seem like he's answering, or it seems like he's a zillion miles away? We all know what that experience is like. Well, I want to encourage you uh, with this particular book of the Bible today uh, to have faith in the midst of your frustration. I'm going to give you some faith things to do when you're frustrated, no matter what the frustration is about, frustration on the job, frustration in the church house, frustration in your house, whatever it is, these faith things are essential to getting you through this time or season of your frustration. The first thing is simply this, talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. Note, I'm real clear there. Talk to God about it. We see in chapter 1 here, the prophet Habakkuk is talking to God. He's having a conversation with God. That's what you'll see as you read the book. It's a conversation between the prophet and God. God will hear you when you pray. And so uh, the, the, the prophet is frustrated, and he's sharing his frustrations, not with others. He's sharing his frustrations with God himself. You have an audience with with God, believer, you can come boldly to the throne of grace where you can obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I say this often on our prayer call, whereas once access has been denied, now access has been granted. You can come to the Lord with boldness, even with frankness of speech. We never come in arrogance. We always come in humility, but God wants us to share our heart with him. You cannot, you should not share your heart with everyone because what you share today may be in the newspaper or social media tomorrow. In fact, it probably might happen even sooner than tomorrow because that's just how people are. But God is not like that. He's not a man to behave like one. He is not flawed. He's holy. And so you, even in your frustration, can go to God because he already knows you're frustrated. God knows your thoughts are far off. Even before you think them, God knows it. God's always known what you are going to think. He knows what you're thinking now. He knows what you're going to be thinking an hour from now because he's God. And he invites you to come. If you're going to talk to anybody about the frustration in your home, the frustration on the job, talk to God about it. Talk to the one who can help you. Talk to the one who can help you make sense out of what you're going through. Let me say something to you all who are having trouble in your home, trouble with your, your spouse, marriage trouble, uh, be careful with whom you share your trouble because not everybody is for you. I would encourage you to keep other people out of your business. Oh, I can't hear you, so you got to put it in the chat. You got to put it in the chat. While you are lamenting to your girlfriend about your husband, uh, don't be surprised if you see your husband and your girlfriend walking in the mall one day. She's figuring, well, you didn't want them, so I figured I'd take them. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh, uh oh, oh, I see some noise over there in the chat. Uh oh, uh oh, come on, come on, come on with it. Somebody ought to say, Preach, Pastor. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm giving you some wisdom. But what you speak to God about, God can do something about it. Your girlfriend, your, be, uh, your best friend, uh, she may not be able to help you through it. I, I may not be able to help you with everything that you need, but I'll always point you to one who can. That's why I'm pointing you to Jesus right now. Talk to God about it. And so the prophet talks to God about it, and then God began to speak to him. He's giving his complaint. That's really what he's doing in his frustration. He's saying Israel has become violent, unjust, and corrupt. Lord God, I need you to intervene. How long, Lord, how long? How long are you going to have my spouse acting the way they're acting? How long are you going to have these children uh, uh, walking in, 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 in a way that, that's inconsistent with how I've raised them? How long shall I be troubled on the job? How, how long? Father, shall we deal with corruption in the government? How long, God, do something? And then God speaks up to the prophet Habakkuk, and he said, oh, I, I know what's going on now. You ask the question, what's going on? He says, I, I'm telling you that uh, uh, you can look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded. This is in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. He says, I, I, I want you to note this, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. I want you to know something here, the church, that God is up to something. Come on, encourage somebody in that chat area. Just put it there. God is up to something. You better hear me. I'm going to say it again. God is up to something. Even if it seems like he's on vacation and that, that he doesn't have a clue as what's going on, God is up to something. He's doing something. And he says, it's so great, it, 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 it's so big, it's so me that you wouldn't even believe it if it were told you. You know, we see this passage referred to in Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 40 through 41, we see in a New Testament application where uh, the word of the Lord is, beware therefore lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. God is up to something, and, 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 and it may not be the something you want it to be. That was the case here, because God said to Habakkuk, I'm doing something. He said, I'm going to use the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. I'm going to use your enemies to get your attention. I'm going to use trouble to get you back in alignment with my will and my way. Oh, my God, everybody knows something about trouble. You know, there's some trouble that comes simply because of life. But then there's some trouble that comes as a harvest or a crop because of the seed that you've sown. There's some trouble that you experience because of the decisions that you've made. <laughs> you, you're having some challenges maybe now with that spouse, but nobody told you to marry that spouse, but you wanted to do it. In fact, everybody was telling you don't go down that aisle, but you just had to do it. Now you've made your decision, and now you're troubled and challenged. Well, even if that was your story or is your story, God can intervene. You're going to have to let him. You're going to have to eat some humble pie, and you're going to have to cry out to him. But I tell you what, he'll let some trouble come into your life to get your, to get your attention. And that's essentially what happened here. So I can imagine the prophet Habakkuk is like, really, God? R really? You're holy. You're righteous. You're the everlasting one. You're actually using the evil uh, Babylonians, the Chaldeans, these corrupt people, you're using them. Yeah, he said, I told you, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it if it were told you. But this is what God says he's up to. And so the prophet is having his wait a minute moment like, wow, you're going to do what, Lord? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then it brings us to the second point of the thing that you should do when you're in this season of frustration. And that's simply this, wait watch and see. Wait, watch and see. The prophet says in chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, he says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart, or the tower, and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. 
for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So, in essence, what God is saying here is I'm going to do something and I'm going to give you some revelation. I'm going to give you some insight, but you got to wait for it. And then you got to embrace it. You got to wait and expect that you're going to see it. So the prophet says, I'm going to get somewhere uh, with the Lord. Uh, this is after his first complaint. He says, I'm going to get somewhere before the Lord. I'm going to get on the tower. I'm going to get on, on a pl at a place where I can uh, uh, just kind of get away from it all and hear from the Lord. And the Lord speaks to him and says, I'm going to give you a vision. And so you need to write it down, which means he, he, he was prepared to receive something from the Lord. And in this time or season of waiting, you ought to be prepared to receive something from the Lord. If you're going to wait on the Lord, wait there with expectation. Too many of us think waiting on the Lord is like, okay, I have to wait two hours or two weeks or two months or 10 years. And we're constantly looking at the clock, constantly asking, is today today? When's it going to happen? And we're waiting. And sometimes we get even more frustrated in the wait because God is taking so long. I have learned this about God, that he is never late. Do I, do I get an amen in here? A, amen out there? He is never late. But you know what else I've learned about God? He's never early. He's right on time. His timing is impeccable. So if he's making you wait, though it tarry, it shall come. You got to know it's going to be revealed in his own time, which is the best time. It's the perfect time. So when you're waiting on the Lord, instead of just watching the clock, or watching your watch, do like a waiter or a waitress who waits tables in a restaurant. Attend to the Lord. Spend time uh, uh, asking the Lord, what, what would bring you pleasure today? What would you have me to do for you? What is your delight, Lord? As we shared a couple of weeks ago, his delight is in us. And, well, our delight should be in him. That's what we ought to be doing while we're in the wait. And then we ought to be waiting with watchful expectation. I've said to you time and again, church, that when we speak of hope scripturally, it's not wishful thinking, it's confident expectation. So while I'm waiting, I am watching and I'm expecting to see what God will show me and then I'm expecting to see the manifestation of it. Oh my God. And then when you consider the particular uh, 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 narrative here, you see that even though God was going to raise up this enemy and use this enemy to bring Israel uh, into alignment with his will again, that he says to the wicked, woe to the wicked. And he gives essentially five woes to the wicked about their greed, their false security, their violence, their arrogance, and their idolatry. And so for anybody here who wants to volunteer to be an enemy of the people of God, you can do so if you want to, but woe to the wicked. God will take care of you just for volunteering. Because when God's got his eyes on his people, when God's got his hands on his people, you dare not stretch out your hand against them. God will take care of his people always, and God will smite the very ones. That's why you don't, you, who, will, who will oppose you or stand up against you. That's why you don't have to worry about your enemies. Remember this always. He sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies. God will let you live long enough and enjoy his peace and prosperity. He'll have you wine and dine at his table while your enemy who tried to destroy you, who tried to kill you, who tried to uh, make life miserable for you, sit back and watch you blessed of the Lord. I know I got some blessed people in here and I know I got some blessed people out there that have been blessed in spite of every scheme, tra uh, 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 every scheme rather, every trick, every method of the enemy. Here you are today, still here, even though they lied on you, spread rumors about you, even, even though they tried to get your job, even though they tried to get your spouse, whatever it is, here you are today you're still here somebody ought to write that in the chat somebody ought to just come on holler across the room to somebody and say i'm still here god will take care of your enemies i feel like pressing the point just a little bit longer come on god will take care of your enemies be not envious of evil doers. Don't worry about your enemies. Stop staying up at night being anxious, anxious about your enemies. And don't be a fool and try to play your enemy's game. 
God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Do I have a witness? He'll take care of your enemy. Best thing for you to do is pray for him. Amen. And in the midst of the woes, God gives. My God, God gives a promise. He gives a promise. We have the promise of the Lord's ultimate triumph. In verse 14 of chapter 2, it says, The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. I want to encourage you that even while you're going through, even in the midst of your frustration, that you're going to see the glory of the Lord. And the glory is his goodness. And so while you're waiting and while you're watching, expect to see the glory of the Lord. If God brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. And he's going to bring you out of it victoriously. And the glory that shall be revealed is not worthy to be compared uh, or the things that we're dealing with now with the glory that shall be revealed. And so remember this, there's another side of trouble. You may be in this place right now, but just up ahead, you're going to see the glory of God like you've never seen before. Can we take a moment right here and just put a praise on that? Come on, we'll do it here. You do it there. Come on, somebody praise the Lord. And while you're doing it, just shout glory. Glory, 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 glory. Ah, the earth shall be filled. Ah, I love it, I love it. Shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Well, it brings me to my third faith thing to do when you're frustrated. And that is found in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him. But the just shall live by faith. Here's what you got to do in the good times and in the bad when you're feeling at ease and when you're frustrated, you got to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Come on, say it with me. The just shall live by faith. This expression just refers to those who have been justified are those who are called righteous. And so believers in Christ, we have been declared righteous. Not any good of ourselves, not any doing of ourselves, but what he did. For he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He declares that you and I are righteous. He says the just or the righteous shall live by faith. This word live this word live in the Hebrew is a word that I learned and actually checked it out, made, did my own fact check. I learned this word from the Clark sisters. This word for life is the Hebrew word haya. <laughs> uh, you, we all used to hear that growing up. I think everybody's Pentecostal search. Some mama gonna say haya. And uh, uh, my God, that speaks life. The, the, the just shall haya by faith. Uh, you believer, you in your good times, you in your bad time, you shall live higher by faith. And the word higher in the Hebrew here is a word. Uh, this word means to live and breathe. It means to continue to live, to remain in life. It means to re be restored to life and health. Furthermore, the word means to live uh, prosperously, to live pleasantly, to live vibrantly, and I like this one, to live, an to live in a way that's considered animated. God doesn't want us to live a dry life, a dull life. God wants us to live. If, the, if anybody ought to be living on this earth, it ought to be the people of God. How is it that those who don't even know God seem like they're having more fun than the folk who know God? How dare you give a false impression to people that to be in Christ means to have a somber, sad look on your face always, to be one of, uh, of sorrow. Well, that means I'm serious for God. You got to get ugly for the Lord. No, how about get rid of your mean spirit and get the joy of the Lord? If anybody ought to show the joy, real joy, it ought to be the believer in Christ Jesus. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. So we got to joy in him come what may and enjoy life the just shall live by faith or by his faith and so you say you have faith well it's time not to just talk it it's time to live it 
we see this expression mentioned three times in Scripture, in the New Testament Scriptures, rather. Romans 1 and 17, Galatians 3 and 11, and also Hebrews chapter 10 and 38. I think God wants us to know the just shall live by faith. And so I am determined, come what may, to live by faith, to live by my faith in God. I have learned that I got to trust God when I can't trace God. I've got to learn that I can't have faith in me. I got to have faith in God. I can't have faith in people. I got to have faith in God. Faith is not fear. Fear is not faith. Faith, my God, triumphs over fear. So you got to put fear in check and say, no matter what it looks like, no matter what's going on, I choose to believe God. Come on, somebody say it here. You say it there. I believe God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. This brings me to a wonderful segue to my last point. And my last point here, this fourth faith thing to do when you're frustrated is one of my favorites of all the points that I'm giving you today. And that is praise the Lord no matter what. Praise the Lord no matter what. Uh, we see this in chapter 3 of Habakkuk. I told you there was just three chapters. So he has this conversation with God, and, and God is telling him, I'm doing a work now. You're not going to necessarily like the work, may not understand the work, may not agree with the work, but when it's all said and done, though it may be painful for a bit, it's going to get you on track again. And so the prophet says, well, the just shall live by faith. Well, I'm going to trust you, God, even though I can't trace you. I'm going to have faith in you, even though this is a challenging place to be. And so we see here in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, these words. Note, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shigayon. Oh, Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known in wrath. Remember mercy. So he's praying, and the prayer, though, is connected to his praise. So he's got prayer and, and, and praise together. In fact, it's, 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 it's more like a fusion of the two. When you consider Habakkuk 3 and 1 in the Amplified, you'll find these words, a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet set to wild enthusiastic and triumphal music and so he's he he gives us uh, uh, this 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 faith thing to do in the midst of our frustration and the faith thing to do in the midst of a world that's gone crazy he says pray and praise praise and prayer and when we get to the latter part of the verse we see one of my favorite passages in the scriptures where the prophet says in light of all that I have discovered, talking to God, all that he's shown me, all that I've seen, all that I've heard, all that I know, things are not like I want them to be right now. So he goes on to say, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food. Though the flock may be caught off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I want to encourage you today to make certain that in the midst of what you're going through that you have a yet praise. That means I'm going to praise the Lord no matter what. I'm going to praise him if you like it. I'm going to praise it, praise him if you don't like it. Because my praise is not for you. My praise is, up, is to the Lord. Faith people praise God. Faith people thank God. Faith people worship God. They are not temperamental people. They don't just praise and worship God when they have peace and prosperity, when everything is in order. But people of faith people even in the midst of their frustration will do like the psalmist who says bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name David said elsewhere in scripture Psalm 42 in fact verse 5 and 11 uh, he says the same why are you cast down oh my soul and why are you disquieted within me hope in God for I shall yet Praise him for the help of his countenance. See, when you get to looking at God, talking to God, seeing what he sees, 
hearing what he hears, you can have faith in the midst of your frustration. And faith acts a certain way. Faith is not pacing the floor. Faith is, is not faith is not worrisome. Faith is not anxiety. Faith demonstrates itself with conviction and praise and worship unto God. The prophet says, Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hear me when he says, I will rejoice and I will joy. He's really making a bold statement. He's not talking about you who are so conservative. Well, I'll just give the Lord a little clap and, and I'll just kind of rock a little bit. No, that's not what these words mean. These words in the Hebrews, uh, in the Hebrew rather, are demonstrative. The word rejoice means to jump up and down. So the prophet saying, even though the enemy is coming and doing this, that, and the other, and there's violence in the land, and, and there's brutality, and there's all kinds of things that are disturbing us, problems in the home, problems in the city, problem on the job, problem in the nation, he said, I'm going to jump up and down. <laughs> I'm going to rejoice, not in me, not in the earth, not in the nation, but in the Lord, Jehovah, the self-existing eternal one. And then furthermore, he says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. That word in the Hebrew literally means to spin around. And so the prophet's saying, even in the midst of what I'm going through, I'm going to bust a move. It's going to be an act of faith. I'm going to jump up and down. I'm going to spin around. In fact, oh my God. Let me say this to all my brothers out there. It's amazing to me how you can be so calm, cool, and collected in the house of God. It is not you bro brothers alone. It's you two sisters. You think, well, you know that we don't need to be so emotional. But uh, if you're at a game, if you're at a World Series, if you're at a Super Bowl, if you're at the playoffs uh, and your team is winning, oh my God, I've seen people act up crazy. They're hollering, they're screaming, they're crying, they're jumping up. They're turning around, they're high-fiving this one and that one. Well, listen, he said in the same way, in fact, in a better way, because your team may lose, but he will never lose. He is the champion. So I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. My time is up. My time is up. My God. Glory be to God. Glory. I promise you, it's not rocket science. It's really not. If you will just talk to God about it, if you will just wait on the Lord, watch and see, if you will live by faith, if you will praise the Lord no matter what, he'll increase your strength. He'll give you grace <laughs> to empower you to face anything that comes your way. He'll give you peace in the midst of the storm. He'll give you, uh, my God, healing when you're sick and suffering. He'll give you hope in a hopeless situation. He'll give you everything that you need because he is everything that you need. And when you praise the Lord, no matter what, God sees that and God honors that and God moves on behalf of those who trust him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And God's promise is that when it's all said and done, things are going to get better. And I just want to encourage you, you might not feel like jumping up. You may not feel like spinning around, but I dare you to do it by faith. I dare you to praise the Lord anyhow. I dare you to bless the Lord in the good times and, and in the bad times. You got to take this word literally. The psalmist said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Everything in you, the, my soul, soul, intellect, will, seat of the emotions. Motions may be crazy right now, but I'm going to bless them with what I have. Psalmist said, bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Some of us will praise him when we got money in the bank and when we got friends and when both of those are gone, then we just go silent on God. But that's not the time to be quiet. That's the time to kind of juice up your praise and give him even more. Come on, add some fuel to it. Come on, even now, put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. I dare you right where you are. 
Just praise Him. Come on, just praise Him. Just praise Him. Come on, just praise Him. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Seconds. Come on, come on, come on. I, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you. Even in the midst of it, pain in your body, trouble in your home. Yet, 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 yet will I praise him, 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 yet will I, praise him. Yet will I, I am determined, yet, 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 yet will I praise him. It, it, it works, it works. I can't tell you how many times I didn't feel like it, but I did it anyhow. Can't tell you how many times, even by myself at home, I just went to clap and praise it, even cut a step. I was determined, wasn't gonna let the enemy destroy me in my frustration. I had to give him a praise. And I don't know about you, when I think of his goodness, everything that he's done for me, I don't need anybody to suggest the praise. I, I don't need anybody to encourage me to praise. I got to praise. I got to praise. I, I got to praise. Got, got, got to praise him. Come on, Saints. Put a praise on it with us. Got to praise. Got to praise. We'll praise him. Yet will I 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 praise him. Oh, come on. 
virtually. So, um, and I, I, I can hear it, but I don't think I can do it. So, John, catch your breath. Can we just do a little war cry? You got to do it at home. I believe this is prophetic. So get up if you're sitting. We'll do it here. You do it there. Let's meet in the middle. Come on. service ends you don't, you don't have to stop when it ends you can just continue right there where you are um, but I don't want to conclude our time together without giving someone who needs the Lord this invitation come to Jesus now I give you Jesus he can handle any frustration he can handle anything you might think you're beyond saving. No such person, no such person exists. His arms are not short where he cannot save. If you will simply believe on the Lord Jesus, forsaking all others, repent of your sins, confess Jesus as Lord, believing in your heart God raised him from the dead, he'll save you. Quicker than I can do that. 
Salvation comes to you. Just pray with me now. And if you're a backslider, come on, stop playing with God. Stop playing church. Come on, come on back. You confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So come on, pray, pray with me now. Say, dear God, I repent of my sins. I come to you in Jesus' name. I realize my need for salvation. I believe Jesus is raised from the dead. He lives. I confess Jesus is Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Save me, Lord Jesus. Deliver me, Lord Jesus. And fill me with your spirit. And I thank you for your grace to save. I believe by faith in Jesus' name. Therefore, I receive complete salvation. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I vow this day I will live for you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I feel such an urging of the Holy Spirit to say to you, and I'm not trying to be rude. The last thing I, do, the last thing I would want to do is to offend you. But I, I, I'm, I'm impressed to point at you and say this to you this way. Your sins are forgiven. Whoever sins you remit, they are remitted. Your sins are forgiven. The Lord says, tell you your sins are forgiven. Now forgive yourself and move on. Satan will no longer have that grip on you. You are free in Jesus' name. If you prayed with me, please take a moment as quickly as you can and text Agape to 797979. 79. Let me know if you received Jesus Christ this morning or if you rededicated your life to him. Please do that. We want to rejoice with you and we want to be here to serve you, to help you so that you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, if you're looking for a new, new home, you don't have to wait till June when we start reassembling. You can become a part of our growing family even now. There's information there on the screen. Please do that today. We want to include you and our growing family. God is up to something, as I said earlier, and I'm excited about it. Join me on the prayer call this week, Tuesday through Friday, and also right back here Wednesday evening for revival service, a revival fire. It's going to be, it's going to be hot. It's going to be lit. Holy Ghost lit, all right? Well, I'm going to step off uh, and get out the way, and you going to continue praising and worshiping and magnifying the Lord. I say shalom. Can't be in your house, but yours is a worthy home, and I speak peace. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Shalom.
for every blessing. Hallelujah for this I give you praise for every mountain you brought me over for every trial you seen me through for every blessing hallelujah for this I give you praise oh for every mountain you brought me over for every child you see me through for every mountain I sing hallelujah hallelujah for me I give I give you praise you brought me over You brought.
You brought me 